Hello, I'm Mrs. Stevenson. Flight of a ball. A ball is launched at 4.5 meters per second at 66 degrees above the horizontal. What are the maximum height and flight time of the ball? We have a diagram that we're going to use to represent the flight of the ball. This is the initial position, this is the maximum height, and then this is the, f the final landing spot. We're going to call the upward direction positive and to the right positive. So the upward is the positive y and to the right is the positive x. We have our initial velocity which can be represented either by v sub i or v, v sub zero. They both mean initial velocity. And when we look at our motion diagram of the flight of the ball, we can see that the initial velocity starts out larger and the velocity decreases as it goes up because the arrows are getting smaller. Then all the way back down, our arrows are getting bigger, so the speed is, or the velocity is increasing. So our acceleration is in the downward direction. Because velocity is a vector and it has a direction, we can break it into its x components and our y components. So we can either have our an initial velocity in the x direction and our initial velocity in the y direction. For this problem, since we are asked about the maximum height, which is in the y direction, we're only going to be paying attention to the initial velocities in the y direction. We said that the acceleration of the ball was in the downward direction. It speeds up on the way down, slows down on the way up. And that is because the force of gravity is our net force, and gravity is always in the downward direction. In order to start this problem, like always, we want to write down our known values We know that our initial velocity in the y direction, that i is for initial, is zero. Or excuse me, our initial position in the y direction is zero, we're starting on the ground. Our initial velocity is going to be 4.5 meters per second. And we know that our angle, which is symbolized by theta, which this is the angle, is 66 degrees from the horizontal, which means this angle here is 66 degrees from the ground. We also know that our acceleration, which is because it's in the downward direction due to gravity, is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And this negative sign simply means that it's in the downward direction because we define the upward y direction as positive. We have to write down our unknowns, what we're trying to solve for in the problem. And in this case, our unknowns, we want to know the maximum height of the ball, which is the maximum y value on our figure here. We also want to know the time of the flight. We eventually want to use the equation distance is equal to one-half acceleration times time squared plus our initial velocity times time. However, in this problem, our distance is going to be our maximum y value or our height. So we're gonna, we can substitute in y max for d and also our initial velocity, because we are only looking in the y direction or the y component, our initial velocity, we are just going to be looking at our y component of the initial velocity. So when I substitute these two values in to our formula, we see that the y max is equal to one half acceleration times time squared plus the initial velocity in our y direction times time. Scroll down so we have a little more room here. Now velocity is a vector, so we can break it down into its components. Keep our equation up there. And so from our diagram, we saw that we had our initial velocity of 4.5 meters per second. Well, this has an x component to it and a y component to it. So we're going to call this our initial velocity 
with our x component and our initial velocity, that's our y component. This is the one we want to use in our formula, so we actually have to figure it out. We know the angle from before was 66 degrees, so we can use our trig functions to help us solve for the numerical value of our initial velocity in the y direction. And this can be done saying that the um, sine of our angle, remember we use theta to symbolize that, is going to be our opposite over our hypotenuse, which is our initial velocity in the y direction divided by our initial velocity. We want to have this initial velocity in the y direction by itself, so we're going to multiply both sides by the initial velocity. So we're going to see our expression for our initial velocity in the y direction is going to be the initial velocity times the sine of our angle. We can plug these values in because we know our initial velocity and we know our angle. So plugging these values in, our initial velocity was 4.5 times the sine of 66 degrees. When you calculate this out, you find that the initial velocity in the y direction is 4.1 meters per second. I'm going to scroll down again and give us a little more room, but we're going to remember that value for initial velocity in the y direction. So because the problem asks us to figure out the time for the total trip, we're going to have to use, determine an expression for time. And to do this, we're going to use the equation that the velocity in the y direction is equal to the, the initial velocity in the y direction plus the acceleration in the y direction times time. Well, we want to get this time by itself, so we need to get all of the rest of our variables on the other side of the equal sign. So first, we're going to have to subtract the initial velocity in the y direction from both sides. When this happens, they cancel on this side so that we have the velocity in our y direction minus the initial velocity in our y direction. And that is equal to our acceleration in the y direction times our time. We still want to get this t by itself. We have to get this a onto the other side of our equal. So we're going to divide both sides by a, or the acceleration, in the y direction, of course. And it cancels on the right. So what we're left with, I'm going to bring the t over, so our t is equal to our velocity in the y direction minus our initial velocity in the y direction divided by our acceleration in the y direction. So this is our expression for time that we are eventually going to use to determine the numerical value for time. But remember that we have our expression for the maximum height or the maximum y position. So y max is equal to the initial y position, which in this case was the ground, plus our initial velocity in the y direction times time, plus one half times acceleration times time squared. And in this problem, our acceleration is in the y direction. So just make sure you keep remembering that it's all the same acceleration. We have our expression for time that we're going to plug into our expression for our maximum height because we know numbers for the rest of these except for our time. So we need to be able to plug in our expression in order to figure out our maximum height. So our maximum height is equal to, again, our initial y position plus our initial velocity in the y direction. I'm going to plug all of this in for my t for the time. So we have our velocity in the y direction minus our initial velocity in the y direction divided by our acceleration in the y direction. 
we still have plus one half our acceleration in the y direction. Here I have a t again, and it's squared, so I'm going to plug in my expression for time. I have to remember to square it. So I have my velocity in the y direction minus my initial velocity in the y direction divided by the acceleration in the y direction squared. Using my known values, I'm going to plug in my numbers into this expression. So my maximum height is my initial position, because I'm on the ground, is zero meters. We determined previously that our initial velocity in the y direction was 4.1 meters per second. In order to substitute a value in for the y component of the velocity at the maximum height, you have to remember that the object's path on the way up, it's slowing down all the way up, and right when it reaches its highest point, it stops just for an instant. So our velocity at the highest point will be 0 meters per second. And we already figured out that our initial velocity in the y direction is 4.1 meters per second. We know our acceleration is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to rewrite all of this after I scroll down, so it's a little easier to read. So, so far we had filled in our y max is equal to 0 meters as our starting position plus 4.1 meters per second, 0 meters per second as our velocity at the very tippy top of its path, and our initial velocity in the y direction, and then dividing by that acceleration due to gravity, which was that negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Filling in our numbers for the very last section of our expression here. We have our one half, which we keep the same. Our acceleration is again negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This is going to look similar when we fill in our values for the end of our expression to as we did here. They're all the same, so our y component of the velocity at the tippy top is again 0 meters per second, subtracting our y component of our initial velocity, which was 4.1 meters per second. We're going to divide by our acceleration due to gravity, once again, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And the big thing to remember here, it's so easy to forget, you have to square it. After all this is done, you figure out that the maximum height of this ball is 0 0.86 meters.